In the words of Edward Vernon Rickenbacker, the aviation pioneer, aviation is proof that given the will, we have the capacity to achieve the impossible. And how do we do it? Well, by working together in partnerships across the whole value chain. Yes, impossible is nothing, especially if minds are united and all stakeholders from governments to airlines to airports come together. These collaborations can open doors into a world of endless possibilities and chart the path towards a sustainable future. To find out how, let's explore the critical roles key industry players are undertaking to achieve net zero emission goals in the second episode of Future of Transport, Innovative and Sustainable, a sustainability series brought to you in partnership with Edmonton International Airport. Edmonton International Airport, YEG, we can handle any size of operation, including oversized, heavyweight, and industrial cargo within the Port Alberta Foreign Trade Zone. Our IATA CEIV Pharma community has expertise handling all multi-temperature controlled shipments, including pharmaceuticals, perishable products, advanced agricultural, and high-value-added products. Access Canada, the U.S., and Mexico through a multimodal transportation hub that includes major highways and proximity to two national rail lines. This makes YEG a key hub between Asian and North American markets. Sustainability drives every aspect of our cargo business and on-airport ecosystems, making Edmonton International Airport your best choice for investment to move our industry forward to a net-zero future. Visit flyeia.com cargo. Before we dive deeper into sustainability innovations, let's discuss how government support, policy changes, and industry collaboration can accelerate the path towards sustainability. It's important that, to remember that sustainability is made of many small wins in a larger journey, and collaboration with great business partners makes a lot difference. According to the Air Cargo Association, or TIACA, regulators are increasing their pressure on businesses to focus more on sustainability. Tiaka's Air Cargo Sustainability Insights Report 2024 found that the pressure from regulators keeps increasing year on year. Only 37% of the respondents in 2021 were indicating regulatory pressure while it is now 61%. That is 6 points more than last year and 24 points compared to 2021. As a result, Top executives prioritize sustainability. 91% of the respondents confirm it is supported by their CEO and 97% highlight that sustainability is equally or more important than last year. Tiaka's Director General, Glenn Hughes, stated we see significant increases in organizations' focus on energy efficiency and carbon footprints reduction. Fleet renewal features in airline and ground handler strategies, as well as green buildings and optimization strategies, leveraging innovation and digitalization. This is because authoritative bodies like the International Air Transport Association, or IATA, TIACA, and the International Civil Aviation Organization are guiding airlines in meeting ambitious sustainability goals while airports offering incentives for using SAP. As a result, airlines are also modernizing fleets and increasing their use of SAP. The UN Secretary General Gutierrez has called for all means of transport to realize net zero emissions by 2050. And we advanced to this call with targets and plans for international transport. We are urgently responding to the many priorities the ALTAC has given us, and especially racing to make sustainable aviation fuels and low-carbon aviation fuels 
both affordable and accessible. As we know that these fuels can provide over half of the needed CO2 emission reductions. The president of ICAO announced the organization is creating a detailed roadmap to guide organizations, stakeholders and members towards achieving sustainability goals. In particular, the roadmap will include working with the energy and the financial sectors so to accelerate the much needed investments in this area by fostering the international cooperation. And especially important a priority here is the operationalization of the IKEA project denominated Finvest Hub. It aims to facilitate access to investment capacities and funding from financial institutions. At IATA's 79th AGM and World Air Transport Summit held in Istanbul, Priti Jain, the then Global Director of Policy, Chemicals and Carbon Solutions at Lanzatec and currently leading the Net Zero Transition Program at IATA, emphasized how government should approach sustainability in the aviation sector. First of all, I think uh, we all are aware that there are already technology pathways available to produce SAF. So what is needed X? So next we require to have these plants at the accelerated deployment. And we shouldn't forget in this process that these are first of a kind plants. So we need investments. So policies need to promote technology neutrality and also need to bring financial incentives or the mandates. So it needs to be a carrot and stick kind of approach. Similarly, Matt Gorman, Heathrow's Director of Carbon Strategy, emphasized that sustainable aviation fuels are no longer just a concept. They have already powered hundreds of thousands of flights. He urged the government to seize the momentum and enact legislation for a revenue certainty mechanism that would support the development of a domestic SAP industry. According to Gorman, this is crucial for the UK to reap the benefits of job creation, economic growth, and energy security before it's too late. December last year, Edmonton International Airport, or YEG, joined global leaders at COP28, the UN Climate Conference in Dubai, where 200 nations focused on collaborative strategies to address climate change. Yeah, so COP20, we're really blessed. I think this is a role that government can play. And what is a role that regulators play versus private industry play? We saw our, the government do through Transport Canada is set some targets that bring a group of people together to green the logistic supply chain. So at COP20, we're blessed to partner with Dubai World Ports, with the Dubai government, Korea, Japan, uh, Fort au Prince Rupert, CN Rail ourselves, and the, we are blessed as well the Premier to come along from the province. Moreover, collaboration also means partnership across industries. For instance, collaboration between an airline and an energy company that manufactures sustainable aviation fuel. So let's discover one more collaboration. Delta Airlines partnership with Neste, one of the top producers of sustainable aviation fuel. The aviation industry is a hard to decarbonize sector. 90% of our impact on the planet comes from jet fuel, which is required to fly. With that, it's really a challenge to try to figure out how do we move to net zero. So for us at Delta, it's about surrounding ourselves with partners that every single day are showing what is possible. And that's where Neste comes into play. Delta collaborated with Neste in 2021, which included an experiment with Neste and Colonial Pipeline to explore the feasibility of transporting SAF via existing pipeline infrastructure. Neste has been instrumental in helping Delta bring SAF on board its airplanes and scale it. And to date, they've helped us bring SAF to some of our biggest and most important hub market. According to an in-depth report by IATA in 2022, the global electricity sector saved 520 billion US dollars in fuel cost due to renewable energy. High fossil fuel prices have further boosted renewable competitiveness, with 86% of new installations generating cheaper electricity than fossil fuels. 
when you look at the wind and solar energy sectors over the past 30 years, they have achieved significant growth due to a strategic mix of technology push and demand pool policies. Thanks to that, this growth has driven innovation, investment, cost reduction, and more generally, the widespread development, deployment of those technologies, making solar and wind viable alternatives to conventional fossil fuels. Sustainability from airport's point of view. Um, we're currently uh, delivering 1.5% of SAF uh, to our airlines at Heathrow. That sounds like a small number, but currently, given the scale of production of SAF, it is really significant in the global aviation market. We have plans to grow that to 2.5% next year. That's a fund and an incentive scheme worth £71 million. And then by 2030, to grow that to 11% um, of all of the fuel at Heathrow to be uh, derived from SAF sources. From an airport's perspective, sustainability initiatives can encompass a wide range of actions, from using sustainable aviation fuels to installing solar panels, transitioning from paper to digital processes and recycling waste. Canada's Edmonton International Airport, or YG, is emerging as a leader in sustainability. YG is committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2050 with a particular emphasis on reducing airport operations and emissions through three key areas of focus. Regular reporting on greenhouse gas emissions with updated inventories, carbon elimination implementing decarbonization strategies in line with the Paris Agreement through real business changes and innovations. Net zero annual carbon emissions for scope one and two by 2050 or earlier. Well, YG has also installed a $12 million natural gas co-generation electricity plant on site. This plant is set to decrease the carbon footprint of its main terminal by 20% and lower overall electricity-related emissions by 20%. The airport has also changed over 18,000 light fixtures to energy-efficient LED units. Moreover, YG is taking serious steps to improve sustainability and efficiency in its cargo operations. All the practical steps working towards sustainability for cargo operation is obviously implementing eco-friendly practices such as utilizing electric ground support equipment as well as exploring green packaging solution or um, optimizing flight scheduling to minimize carbon uh, emissions and environmental impacts. Something I learned from my past life within an airline is for cargo operation, paper is still used. Moving away from paper manual documents that involve still hard copies, such as airway bills, is something that we can rethink. So the cargo industry is moving towards a digital e-freight uh, documentation process which will speed up many of the custom, for example, or handling side, but also definitely will be better for the environment. Similarly, Australia's Melbourne Airport is committed to environmental sustainability, targeting net zero scope one and two emissions by 2025. In 2023, they commenced construction on a second solar farm, aiming to generate 34 gigawatts annually covering 40% of their energy needs. In 2018, India's Cochin International Airport won the United Nations Champions of the Earth Award in the Entrepreneurial Vision category. It is the world's first fully solar-powered airport with a total capacity of 40 megawatts on a net metering basis. Solar energy is the future. We feel this will be a much, much better source of power than the coal-based or the gas-based power plants. It reduces the carbon emission. It is as good as planting trees. In 2015, we became the first airport in the world to be completely powered by solar energy. We started with a 100 kilowatt pilot project. We found that we could produce about 400 kilowatts of power. So then we thought, why not we scale it up? Why not make the whole airport completely solar powered? In some of the countries, they use a lot of money for cutting the weeds. We came out with a new idea, like why not we grow vegetables underneath? Last year, we produced about 60 tons of vegetable out of that farm, which is organically grown also. 
Now let's discuss sustainability from the airline's perspective. Delta uses 4 billion gallons of jet fuel every single year. And our goal is to replace 10% of that with sustainable aviation fuel by 2030. The beauty of sustainable aviation fuel is that it can be used in today's existing infrastructure. That includes both the airplanes of today that will be flying for decades to come. It's a drop in fuel. You can blend up to 50% today. And we've got a line of sight to be able to blend more in the future. WestJet is also focused on optimizing its operations and investing in sustainable aviation fuel to reduce the environmental footprint. We have one of the youngest fleets and most modern fleets in North America, so we are already pretty low emission per, per passenger. Uh, secondly, we uh, are doing quite some work with sustainable aviation fuels, so uh, we, we have actually had uh, the, the first route in North America that was served on a regular basis uh, by, by usage and of, uh, of uh, sustainable aviation fuel. So we, we are working with this and uh, we are strongly encouraging the Canadian government to help production to the sustainable production of sustainable aviation fuel. Canada being a strong natural resources country should actually have lots of production, but by now not a single molecule of SAF is being produced in Canada. In March 2024, WestJet reported an 11% reduction in fuel emissions intensity in 2023 compared to 2019. WestJet also meets federal carbon charges on liquid fuels and support domestic SAF development as a founding member of the Canadian Council for Sustainable Aviation Fuels and the National Aviation Council of Canada. The road to a sustainable future is challenging, but the aviation industry is not shying away from this challenge. From revolutionary aircraft designs and alternative propulsion systems, the sector is leaving no stone unturned in its quest for a greener tomorrow. You know, I come back to sustainability. That is the next biggest challenge that aviation has, which is to find the pathway to sustainable aviation fuel. We heard Willie talk about that earlier. We need to do that together. We're a coalition of, of airlines. Yes, we should all come together with the airlines, OEMs, energy companies, or the government to pave the way towards a sustainable future. We have to stay together in advocating for the right solutions when it comes to government incentives, when it comes to making sure that we can bring down the cost of SAF as quickly as possible. And it's just going to be most important for us as an industry just to make sure that our stakeholders, in particular our consumers, know the importance of SAF and that they support the industry as we decarbonize. To know more about sustainable aviation fuels, how airlines as well as airports manage and recycle waste, and many other interesting facts about the aviation industry's pathway to a sustainable future, stay tuned with us and keep watching the series Future of Transport Innovative and Sustainable that we bring to you in partnership with Edmonton International Airport, one of Canada's busiest airports. If I look at the issue of sustainability, in your individual airlines, <coughs> you're all attacking it in different ways, but you've all got the same challenge in this net zero 2050. Do you believe the target will be met? A yes or a no to start with? 2050? Yes. Yes. Do you believe it will be met? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. But it's going to be hard. And you have to lean in, and you've got to be creative. What does that creative. mean? That that, you but, said you know, yes or no? <laughs> no, no, but yes, I said yes. I said yes, but yeah. you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a piece of cake. It's, it's going to be hard. And that there has to be government, there has to be <clears throat> policy, there has to be coalition of, of airlines figuring what? it out.